guys, as someone who loves Navy Federal, I'm gonna be telling you straight up, beware of Navy Federal. Why? We're gonna be covering all of the hot topics in today's video, and I'm gonna be laying it out for you, the pros and cons of Navy Federal. They've recently made headlines in the news and not for such great reasons. So is Navy Federal really the bank for you? Well, in today's video, you're gonna find out some of the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to Navy Federal. And I'm gonna be giving you a ton of other banks that you can start building a relationship if Navy Federal is not the right bank for you or if you simply don't wanna go the Navy Federal route. Navy Federal is the number one credit union because you guys have made it that way. There are other credit unions out there that are just as good, if not better, than Navy Federal. And we're gonna be covering all of that in today's video. So make sure to stay tuned and get ready, buckle up, it's gonna be a game changer. Let's get started. Welcome to the channel, everyone. My name is Credit Coach Nicole Scott, and in today's video, we're gonna be covering the good, the bad, and unfortunately, the ugly when it comes to Navy Federal. Now, I've done a ton of videos on Navy Federal, and believe me, I was a huge fan for a long time, but after research and after some personal experiences that I've personally dealt with that I'm gonna be sharing with you in today's video, I'm just not so sure about Navy Federal and that's why I wanted to tell you guys beware of Navy Federal. They are the number one credit union because everyone on YouTube is talking about them. And guess what? Everyone on YouTube was talking about them two years ago. So now everything is finally starting to catch up and I'm just not so sure that I can trust this bank any longer and I'm going to be sharing with you exactly why. I'm also going to be sharing with you a number of other credit unions and financial institutions that are just as good as Navy Federal, if not better. So buckle up, let's go ahead and let's get into the nitty gritty. Now, first of all, let's talk about the good with Navy Federal. And many of you have probably watched my Navy Federal Masterclass, and that's how you know of me. Well, I'm going to be covering kind of the opposite of that. In those masterclass videos, I go over all of the great things about Navy Federal, but there are some things that are not so great about them. But first, let's go ahead and get into the good. Now, obviously they give out high limits, so it's a great way for you to just boost up your limits and get your foot in the door with other financial institutions, so that way they can mirror your comparable credit that's already on your credit report. It's kind of like we're using Using them in a sense just to get those high limits. Now, obviously with Navy Federal, I've covered this in multiple other videos, you can request a credit line increase directly through the app and it does not require a hard pull. I just had a few of my clients do this and I actually did this myself, which now I'm maxed out at the maximum 80K unsecured credit card limit that Navy Federal has. You can max this 80 limit out across three different credit cards or you can focus on one or maybe just two, it's up to you. But for myself, I personally have three and those high limit credit cards have literally opened up the door for me to get high limits with other financial institutions and that's exactly what I'm doing. It's now time for me to move on from Navy Federal because I got what I needed from them and now it's time to do more. They have the pledge loan. The pledge loan is a great way for you to build credit, build your relationship. It does not require a hard pull. Basically, you're putting your cash on your credit report as a secured loan, and the money is still available in your account. I have an entire masterclass on how the pledge loan hack works, but guess what? There are other banks that do this as well. Number four is they approve credit scores that are much lower and you wouldn't have those same opportunities if you were to apply with another bank. Navy Federal is known for approving lower credit scores in the 600 and giving them $25,000 credit cards. And that might be one of the reasons why they're in such hot water now. But of course, we'll get into that. They do offer the secured credit card. It's a great way to build credit. A lot of people, even in the 500s, will get approved for their secured credit card 
card, which goes up to a $5,000 credit limit and will eventually graduate in the next six to 12 months where you will get your deposit back in full and then you can graduate to an unsecured credit card. It's a great way to get your foot in the door and again, just start building your relationship and your credit while you are working on getting those negative items removed. Number six is their prepaid debit card. And I've covered this in a lot of my other videos and I'm a big fan of their prepaid debit card because you can simply load it with a credit card. So this is a great way that you can liquidate your credit cards. What that means is simply you are taking the limit that is on your credit cards and you are turning your credit into cash. Sometimes there are transactions that would be a cash transaction versus a credit transaction, mostly in real estate but this is a great way that you can liquidate your credit cards. They have a $600 maximum withdrawal at an ATM and a $3,000 point of sale maximum daily limit. The reason why I like this is because you can add five card holders. All that they have to be is 13 years old and have a valid social security number and you can add them as card holders. They do not have to be a member of Navy Federal. However, the card holder that of the debit card does need to be at least 18 years old and must be a Navy Federal member. Another thing that I want to mention on the prepaid debit card, it has a $10,000 maximum. So if you have questions or you want to ask Navy Federal a little bit more about their prepaid debit card, I recommend reaching out to them directly so you can see if this is going to be a good option for you. Now let's move on. We're going to talk about some of the bad. Now, Navy Federal has recently made headlines for approving more of the white applicants when it comes to home loans. Now, me personally, I have not seen this because me, I was denied as being a white person. And I've had clients who were African American that did get approved but based on their statistics and what is coming out, which is, this is not new news, guys. Navy Federal has been, let's talk about the bad. Now, recently, Navy Federal has made breaking news because they have been caught. Now, I want you to keep in mind, this is not something that they just started doing because there have been reports that Navy Federal racially profiles people dating back to at least five to seven years from what I have seen based on my research. This is just the first time that it has actually come out as breaking news because they are now the number one credit union because so many people have blown them up, myself included, on YouTube. But honestly, guys, you guys need to make sure that you are educated so you are making the right decision. These banks use us. We need to use them just like they are using us. So Navy Federal, I would not recommend to be your primary bank. At one point, I would say definitely I love Navy Federal, but there has been a lot of things that have happened to not only myself, but some of my clients. And now here we see this breaking news that just doesn't leave a good taste in anybody's mouth. Now what they are saying and what they are alleging, and of course this data is based on the data that was approved for homeowner applications. So they are saying that the nation's largest credit union has rejected more than half of its black or conventional, the nation's largest credit union rejected more than half its black conventional mortgage applications. So basically what this means is anyone of different nationalities that would have the same data points, income, credit, you know, all of the different data points that the underwriters look at when it comes to approving an applicant, they were denying more than half of the black applicants and obviously Obviously, we know why they are racially profiling their members. Okay. And again, this is not something that they just started doing. Navy Federal profiles people. And this is what you guys need to understand. A lot of times when we're applying for credit cards and different credit products, we are simply dealing with a computer system that is programmed. When it comes to a mortgage application, it goes through a very strict underwriting process. And what that that means is there are actually real humans that look at our file, look at our credit report and analyze all of the data that comes along with our application, bank statements, financial records, 
credit reports, so on and so forth. So I will leave a link below where you guys can get access to all of my different slides. I actually put a new course together. It's called Banks, Funding and More. And I'm gonna be continuing to add to this course. It is on sale now. So if you wanna get all of the different slides and information for my videos, you wanna go ahead and go to the link in the description so you can get the course. I also have some free options for you guys down there in the description. So make sure to check that out. To learn more about this breaking news, all that you need to do is just head over to Google and you can research a little bit more about this. But this is not the only thing that has left a bad taste in my mouth. And let me share my story with you guys. So as many of you know, I am a Navy Federal member, but I have recently been a victim fraud with my Navy Federal account. And guess what? Their AI system or computer system did not pick it up. I did not get a text message. I did not get a notification. I didn't get squat. And let me tell you guys what happened. I it was mind blown. Okay. So I opened up my app. It was like a normal day. I was just going to pay some bills. And normally I keep this credit card at a zero balance and I log in and I see a, a balance of almost $12,000. It was like 11,000 something dollars. And I'm like, I'm about to have a heart attack. This is, this is not right. This is, this is absolutely not right. Like what is going on? Keep in mind, I keep my credit cards frozen and we're gonna go over that a later, but later on in this video just to be on the safe side. What these hackers did was they added an authorized user to my account. The authorized user, and mind you, I did not get a notification. I did not get any sort of nothing, okay? Once the authorized user was added to my account, they did online cash advances, three different online online cash advances that totaled over $11,000 in fraud. I was mind blown that their system, their security system did not pick this up. That is totally out of my character. I have never done an online cash advance with my credit cards with Navy Federal. Okay. So this is totally out of character for me for number one. And number two, they hit it three times back to back to back. You would think that would alert some sort of notification after they did it and got away with it the first time, but they were able to do it three different times without me knowing anything. Okay. Their security system did not pick this up, which is very, very upsetting because I remember not too long ago, maybe within the last year or so, I was at Foot Locker buying the family some gear and my bill was a little high, maybe close to like a thousand bucks or so. And my transaction got declined and Navy Federal sent me a text message saying, hey, are you trying to make this transaction at Foot Locker? Yes or no? Text me yes if you are. And I did. And of course, the next time they ran my card, it was all good. But you're telling me a thousand dollar or whatever the, you know, fee was, thousand dollar charge from Foot Locker would trigger an alert, but three different online cash advances for 3,000, 4,000, 3,000, that doesn't trigger anything. It was like mind blowing to me. Okay. And I have a really great friend, a best friend since grade school that happens to work for one of another one of my favorite banks at City National. And I was explaining to her what happened. And she was like, yeah, Navy Federal has a ton of fraud going on. They, you know, their systems have been hacked years ago. And this is something that you really need to consider changing banks. Now, keep in mind when I called into Navy Federal to advise them, hey, my account was hacked. I've had fraud. I am freaking out. I'm having a heart attack. I cannot be responsible for $11,000 in online cash advances that I had absolutely nothing to do with. Okay. And I had to wait three to four hours to speak with someone. Okay. I spoke to two different people before I finally got over to the fraud department. And guess what? Their fraud department is so busy that it took three to four hours for me to be able to speak with someone in their fraud department to advise them of what is going on. And you know what? When I, when I was speaking to the gentleman, he helped me. He was not surprised whatsoever. 
And I asked him, why would not, why would your computer system not pick this up? Had this been American Express, they would have picked it up like that. Their AI would have been like, oh wait, hold on. This is totally out of character for this client. Let me reach out to them first and make sure that this is really them and it's not some sort of fraudulent activity going on on the account. That's the great thing about American Express. Their systems are very advanced. Navy Federal, they grew too fast for their own good. And guess what? Their systems are not advanced enough to keep up with what we're bringing them guys like they have they are the number one credit union nowadays and that's strictly because of youtube and all of the other social media videos that are going around about how navy federal gives out all of these credit cards and high limits and so on and so forth but when you're becoming a victim of fraud with their credit cards it just doesn't sit right with you so moving forward i'm going to be keeping all my accounts on lock nothing you know hopefully this will not happen again but you know it's really something to consider guys when you are not using your credit cards i highly recommend that you keep them locked inside of the app you can lock them and unlock them as you use them now i did not get any sort of notification when this authorized user was added to my account so hopefully they will fix that but there are some major major flaws going on with their security system for someone to be able to do three back-to-back -back online cash advances all under 5k but nonetheless three back-to-back -back, totaling almost twelve thousand dollars in fraud so if i'm going through this i can only imagine the thousands and thousands maybe even millions of other people that are dealing with this same thing and then we have to wait hours upon hours to actually speak someone to someone in the fraud department so this whole time we're like sweating freaking out having an anxiety attack because we can't even talk to someone yet to get this whole thing cleared up and when I asked them hey should I file a police report in regard to this identity theft they said no we'll take care of everything on our end I have not heard from them since. Yes, they did take the charges off of my account, but that still just doesn't make me feel good about it. I'm constantly checking my accounts to make sure that there's no sort of unauthorized activity, but now I am really scared and I'm gonna be moving my banking over to USAA. Um, I do have a lot of military family. My family is mostly Navy. I still have an uncle that is active at the San Diego Naval Base. I'm in Northern California, if you guys couldn't tell, but so I'm able to get into a lot of these military banks, which USAA is just as good, if not better than Navy Federal. And we're going to be going over a ton of other banks as well. So I just wanted to share my story with you. This just recently happened within the last month and it really freaked me out, especially when I had to wait so long to speak with someone, because what that tells me is their fraud volume is at an all time high. Now here are some things that you can do to keep your account safe. Do not share your access code with anyone, okay? That access code is connected to you. Therefore, anyone that uses your access code is connected to you. So if someone decides that, hey, I'm just gonna, not gonna pay this back, it just doesn't look good for anyone, okay? Especially when you were the one that referred them into Navy Federal. Now, if it's someone that you can trust, perfectly fine parents, spouses, people like that, but do not sell your access code online. Do not provide your access code to anyone online. Never share your account information over the phone. Never respond to emails that appear like they're coming from Navy Federal because one of the things that has been happening to a lot of people is they're receiving phishing emails and we're going to go over that in a little bit. But if you suspect any sort of fraud, whether it's a phone call, an email, a text message, do not respond. Now, of course, if you're doing a transaction with your credit card or something and they're texting you to verify that the transaction was yours, it's probably coming from Navy Federal. But if you get any other sort of phone call from them, text message, email, do not respond, do not click on anything, call Navy Federal and verify that they are the ones that are trying to reach you because Navy Federal is never going to call you, email you, or text you for any sort of account information. Just keep that in mind. 
Do not lie to get into Navy Federal either. You are putting yourself in your account at risk if you decide that, hey, I want a Navy Federal account so bad that even though I've never been in the military and I don't qualify because none of my family has, I'm just going to lie and say that they did. I don't agree with that. I do not recommend it because there are so many other banks that you can get into by making a donation or some sort of, you know, small fee to get in. And I've compiled a list of over a hundred different banks and how to get in with them. Because guess what? At one point, you never heard of Navy Federal, but when it got so popular, everyone making videos about it, now all of a sudden it's the number one credit union because it got blown up. But I can guarantee you things are going to get ready to change. People's accounts have been being closed left and right. And that's just something that you you don't want to have happen to your account. So don't lie to get in. And again, I'm going to be sharing a lot of other banks out there that are comparable to Navy Federal. So that way you can either apply to the charity of the choice or make a small donation to get in with some of these other grade A credit unions. And you can also use my list to locate local credit unions, or you can even locate non-local credit unions. So that way you can start building up a relationship with those banks as well. It's just not worth the risk. And I said this already, do not buy or sell a Navy Federal Access number. Do not buy one from someone online because you are setting yourself up. There is a tremendous amount of fraud going on out there. And, you know, when I saw a comedy video the other day about Navy Federal, there's this guy that makes a bunch of, you know, comical videos on social media. And he was saying, you know, hey, let me get your information so I can open you up a Navy Federal and we can scam real fast. So he was actually making a funny joke of it. I didn't think it was funny at all because I was just recently scammed. So, but I mean, that kind of just brought it all together for me. Like, hey, there's a lot of fraud going on with Navy Federal. Like Navy Federal, there's a lot of people that are just not doing the right thing out there. And that just comes along with everything that goes into all of these hacks is a Eventually, they are going to get played out. Eventually, they are going to, you know, change because unfortunately, there's just too many bad apples that just did wrong by them. So, you know, just be careful. You don't want to lie to get in. You don't want to buy an access number. You don't want to sell an access number. Okay. And you definitely do not want to add anybody as an authorized user to your account. And we're going to go over that as well, because a lot of people don't talk about that, you know, and it's very important to understand if you did add an authorized user, what the uh, repercussions could possibly be. Now let's talk about the ugly with Navy Federal. We kind of talked about the good and of course my master classes. if you want to watch those, those are listed down in the description so you can watch all of the good. We covered kind of all of the bad. Now let's kind of cover the ugly stuff about them because there's a difference between bad and ugly. I mean, ugly is just what we don't see because they try to hide it. And with all of these videos coming out on social media, Navy Federal looks like, hey, I want to get this bank. I want to get high limit credit cards. But you have to make sure that you are playing it safe. You do not want to be a victim of fraud or identity theft or anything like that. So be careful out there. Now, number one comes in at hey, guess what? Their computer systems got hacked a few years ago. So there was a huge data leak. Not a lot of information was revealed. Of course, it didn't make breaking news like it would have today, but these are some of the things that you have to consider is, is their security strong enough for the bandwidth of people that they are bringing in to make them the number one credit union? I'm going to say no. Their security system is not smart enough or strong enough for a lot of these hackers. They've also acquired a really bad reputation for home loans. Now, recently you may have seen that they've been in the news for the same thing. And I went over that earlier, but now this really goes to show this is not when it first started. They've been having a bad reputation when it comes to their home loan process. They have been approving more of the 
white ethnic background versus Hispanic or even black. Because on the application, they ask you what nationality you are. So this has been going on for years. It just happened to make breaking news because guess what? Someone was not going to be quiet until they were heard. And good for him because this is the type of information that we need to know. And I always tell you guys, you know, if you knew better, you would do better. And that's why I bring you this information. So that way you can make an educated decision and see if it's going to be right for you and understand how to play this crazy game of credit, right? Now, if you haven't by now, make sure that you have subscribed to the channel, Credit Coach Nicole Scott. You can also give me a huge thumbs up, leave me a comment below. Let me know your thoughts of the video. And again, make sure to watch this entire video because we're just getting started, okay? And I know my videos can be long, but you can always come back and listen to it later. Make sure you save it, subscribe, turn those bell notifications on. So next time I drop a hot video, you will be the first one to watch it. So um, yeah, the home loan thing, that's just, that's no good. That's no good for them and shame on Navy Federal for that. Now, number three is there have been reports of the credit union not properly reimbursing customers for fraudulent activities. And this is what makes me very worried because initially when you make your fraud claim, they will take the charges off of your account, but that doesn't mean that you are free and clear. They reverse the charges during their investigation period. And if for some reason their investigator finds that, hey, this wasn't fraud or they have no way to prove it, you're gonna be stuck with it. And that's simply not fair or right for people to have to be stuck with these type of fraudulent activity. I mean, I can't imagine if they held me accountable for this $11,000 that was done in online cash advances when that is totally out of character for me. Not once have I ever done that on my credit card and I've had Navy Federal for years, okay? Oh, going on five years, I've had Navy Federal. So I just simply don't agree to this and it is likely to be connected from their data breach that was back in 2015. But again, guys, you really want to make sure that you are careful. Leave your cards locked until you are actually ready to use them. And number four, customer service is at an all time low. It is taking ungodly amount of time to be on hold, to wait to even speak to someone when they used to be Johnny on the spot, man. You used to call in and speak to someone because they're 24 hours as far as their banking on the personal side goes because a lot of their members are overseas, they're in different time zones, so they wanna be you know, available to their members, which are usually service members. But guess what? With the amount of influx of customers, they are not able to handle the volume. And we're going to be going over, you know, what they look for in some of their employees. But I mean, three to five hour wait time to speak with someone in the fraud department. Not to mention, I had a client that, you know, had some bad blood and bad past with Navy Federal. So I advised him to call in and make right with them. Do you know that he was on the phone for over eight hours trying to speak with someone? trying to get someone on the phone just so he can make right with some of his old, you know, account information. And that's just simply, you know, ridiculous because it, they're making it so hard to actually get help, even if you want to make right with them. So, you know, it's really unfortunate that they got so big so quick because that's what happens with a lot of companies is they grow too quickly and they're not able to keep up with the volume volume of people that are coming their way. We used to be able to get through to someone in 15, 20 minutes, and now it's 40 minutes. And uh, not to mention if you have to go to any other departments, but uh, Navy Federal, get it together. I also want to bring to your attention account fees that could potentially drain your account. Navy Federal is known to have very low account fees, but sometimes it can just get out of control if you're not paying attention to it. So make sure that you are accounting for all of the different fees that you are being charged as a member.
Another part of the ugly is they have limited branch locations. What I've noticed is generally their branches are located near some sort of base. I'm in California and the branch near me is actually located right near the Travis Air Force Base. And I've also heard feedback from other people saying, man, they're just unconveniently located. I don't have a branch anywhere near me. Although anyone can open up a bank account, they do have limited branch locations, which could cause cause some issues for some people that need to do some sort of, you know, cash deposits. They make it a breeze to be able to transfer between accounts, but with the limited branch locations that could really affect a lot of people. Number seven of the ugly is you have about a one in 10 chance of getting hired with the Navy Federal. Uh, they hire people that are very clean cut. They do not like tattoos. They do not like piercings. And, you know, there were feedback from current employees that said, they are required to dress professional and they are told to avoid any sort of ear nose piercings, as well as being tattoo free. And that's just simply not right because what they're doing again is they're prejudging people. Just because people have tattoos or piercings doesn't mean that they are any less qualified than someone who does not. But Navy Federal being the bank that they are, again, guys, watch out for them because they are very very judgmental. In 2016, the Consumer Financial Protection, also known as the CFPB, they ordered Navy Federal to pay $23 million to customers along with a $5.5 million penalty as a result of its questionable debt collection activities. So they recently partnered up with one of the largest collection companies, LVNV Funding. So really keep an eye on that because they are also a known collection company that has some questionable practices. Can you imagine that the credit union was threatening to contact military superiors about uncollected overdue debts? They were also intimidating several customers about using false threats to garnish their wages in a collection process. You can't do that. So again, guys, it's so important for you to know your rights as a consumer. And just because you have an overdue collection from a credit card does not mean that they can block your debit card or harass you in any form of or fashion. Number nine, they have a high amount of fraud. Myself, <laughs> I've been a victim of this, so I can be the first one to tell you that it is no joke, okay? And again, I've been with Navy Federal going on five years now, and you would think that their system would have an understanding of my characteristics as a consumer, similar to like the American Express system. They know my characteristics as a spender, but unfortunately that still wasn't good enough. So recently Navy Federal has had a huge influx of fraud. So again, guys, if you are not using your credit cards, go into the app, lock the cards. If you have any authorized user accounts that you have added to your uh, credit cards, keep those locked as well. Okay. I do not recommend selling trade lines that are Navy Federal. If you are into doing that, please do not do that because you are setting yourself up for fraud. And I will share a story about that in a little bit. But uh, cybercrime, their system is not strong enough to fight all of the crime that is out there. And, you know, even in this little blurb that I got by doing my research, a lot of these people are saying from Navy Federal that, you know, there is a tremendous amount of fraud going on. So again, guys, if you want the slides, head to the description. That way you can read through and review all of it. I put together the course, the banks funding and more course. So that way I can include all of these items that I talk about. Plus the list of credit unions and banks is in there. There's over a hundred different banks and it kind of lists out how you can qualify and how you can join them. Uh, because a lot of people just simply don't qualify for Navy Federal. And now, uh, you know, I, I encourage people to find other banks 
And be careful, beware of Navy Federal, okay? Here's another ugly. Number 10, beware of the phishing scammers. And I covered this a little bit before is these phishing scammers, they send you emails and they're good. Sometimes they'll get the emails looking like they're really from Navy Federal. They'll have the logos in there. They will look official, but they are just scammers. So if you give them your access number, your account information, they will drain your account. So beware, do not provide any sort of account information to anybody text email phone I know I said this but I feel like I have to say it again just so you guys will understand and like man I don't care what they say I don't care if they say my account's in danger my account was this that and the other we're going to call Navy Federal even if we have to wait for an hour to speak with someone and we are going to get the answers directly from them because there is a whole lot of fraud going on with Navy Federal. And I knew that, <laughs> I already knew this before, but I knew when I saw that comical video about the guy doing a little skit about Navy Federal scams, I'm like, oh yeah, this this is this is really a thing. Like there, there are really a lot of scams and fraud going on with Navy Federal. And that just comes along with you know, blowing up as fast as they did and not having a strong enough security system and team to be able to back the bandwidth that they're bringing to their establishment. So they really need to make some heavy investments in their cybersecurity because right now it's just, it's not it. So just really be careful out there, guys. We really wanna make sure that we are playing it safe, keeping our credit cards locked. And I this is what I do. I keep my credit card locked. So when I am about to check out at the store, I unlock it swipe my card, go back into my app and lock it again. So that way my card information cannot be used because it is locked. How in the world they got to be able to add an authorized user and do it that way, I don't know. But I have read ads um, in articles online where it said some of the Navy Federal employees were behind all of this fraud. So that's even scarier because You know, we can't really trust anybody these days, you know, not even the banks. So, you know, it's one of those things that you just want to make sure that you are staying on top of. And I don't want to scare you out of being a Navy Federal member. I want to educate you. So that way, if you knew better, you could do better and you're not going to become a victim because I've also read, you know, different people's reviews where their bank accounts were drained because of fraud. So again, just be on the safe side. Never add an authorized user to your account because guess what? If you add an authorized user to your account, they will have full access to your credit card. And you have to, you know, give, someone has to give you their access number. So your whole account will show up under their login and they will have access to your financials. That is, you don't want that. Okay, do not add anyone as an authorized user with Navy Federal. They are the only bank that I have seen where they, if you add an authorized user, they have access to your account, okay? And we are getting ready to not even offer any trade lines from Navy Federal moving forward because guess what? I shared my story with somebody that is also in the trade line business and they said the same thing. They said, wow, you know what? One of my clients just had fraud a couple weeks ago, same situation as you, except for it was an authorized user that they had added, okay? It was an authorized user that they had added, and I guess they didn't freeze the card. I don't know what happened, but they did the same thing. They took out a bunch of online cash advances. So this is a huge fraud thing that is actively happening to people. So do not sell your trade lines. Do not sell authorized user slots with Navy Federal. Do not even add anyone unless they are a spouse or someone that you can trust. And even then assign them a limit and keep that card locked. Okay. Because you do not want them or anybody tampering with your account. All right. Make sure that you are reviewing your statements, your bank statements. Make sure there's no, you know, out of the ordinary charges, fees, anything like that. I know a lot of us have upon a 
bunch of different transactions that go on in a month. And a lot of us don't even look at our transactions. But I, what I want you guys to do is get in the habit of reviewing all of your account statements when they come out and making sure line by line that, yep, this is all good. And if you don't recognize the name, do some research, make sure that was a charge that either you did or that you authorized, okay? A lot of people don't even review their statements, so they might not even know. The only reason why I really was like, it stood out to me when I was a victim of fraud is because I keep my credit cards at a zero balance. So, you know, I was like, whoa, where, where the heck did this come from? So just really, you know, be careful out there. Here is another article. And again, guys, when I put these slides together, I do my research and I give you the information that you need to know. So that way you guys can make a better informed decision based on the facts. Okay. And this is all just research. But this right here is from classaction.org. They are not a government agency or anything like that. However, they do, you know, report data on companies. And it is very important to understand that Navy Federal, they are failing to reimburse consumers for fraudulent charges. And they have had class action lawsuits brought against them for this. So, you know, I hope to God Navy Federal does not do that same thing to me because we'll be heading to a class action as well. But, you know, beware and just try to play it safe. So that way you don't even have to go through this. But this is messed up that they are, you know, refusing to reimburse people on the good faith investigation for disputed transactions. And I just, I do not agree with this because with me just being a victim myself, like I can only imagine how people feel. And I know not everyone is a hundred percent truthful out there, but you know, I am, I am okay. And I don't steal from people. I don't steal from stores. You know, I saw a post today of a girl stealing groceries and I was like, that's such a turnoff to me. Like, why would you steal some ground beef and like all this other stuff to make your dinner? Like, I, I don't know. I just don't agree with it. I don't agree with stealing. I don't agree with, you know, doing wrong. Okay. I believe in doing good and putting good out there because I believe in karma and I want to put good out there. So good comes back to me. And I want you guys to share this information on your social media. Beware, because these are some of the things that you need to know so you can do better. Their complaint resolution process is inad inadequate. So you'll see here on com this complaints board that Navy Federal has had 245 complaints and only 16% of them were actually resolved. Okay, so this just goes to show that Navy Federal just doesn't care because they are the number one credit union and it's up to us as the consumers to kind of take take them off of their perch and say, look, there are real people out here that are suffering because of your actions, because of your inadequate security system, because of your inadequate staff. So we need you guys to resolve these issues because Navy Federal just thinks, oh, we're the number one bank. Who cares? People are still going to come. People are still making videos until this video comes out. Okay. Again, Beware, guys, because the Navy Federal reviews are just getting worse and worse. And here's another example from Consumer Affairs. Again, this is not a government agency. They collect data, but they've had over 758 reviews and ratings, and only 9% of those were five star. One star was 69%. Now, I know more people are, you know, more engaged to complain about companies when they've had a negative situation happen. But this just goes to show that the negative situations that are occurring are not being resolved. Okay. And that's just simply not right. As the number one credit union, they should have an adequate team that can resolve our complaints, resolve our issues and treat us fair. Okay. And that's what it's all about is being treated fair. And I have proven to you that Navy Federal simply does not treat their members fair. Again, never add an authorized user. We already went over this, so I'm not going to touch on it 
too much more. But you know, some of the pros and cons went over some of those, but these are, this is just even more is, you know, the pros, several low or no fee accounts, just like their credit cards. A lot of them don't have an annual fee. They have great checking accounts where you can earn dividends. They have a large ATM network because of course their branches are not around and they charge fewer fees for than most traditional banks. But again, you have to make sure that they are charging you accurate. And the cons are they have the strict membership requirements. Again, don't lie to get in. It's just simply not worth it. And they have very limited branch access, which could cause problems for those of you that actually need to transact business inside of a branch. Now, let's talk about some of the banks besides Navy Federal, because again, guys, the only reason why Navy Federal got to be the number one credit union is because so many people on social media were creating content about them and showing all these high limit credit cards that they were approved for. But guess what? They are not the only bank out there. Okay. They are a great credit union. They have some great benefits. No doubt about that. However, with the amount of fraud and just not being able to handle the volume that has come their way, not being able to keep up with the times with their security, you know, it's a no brainer for me. I'm changing banks. Okay. And, um, you know, I'm not going to close my credit cards because once you have them open, you want to just keep them open, but I'm going to be just using them as decoration on my personal credit profile. I'm, I do not plan to use my credit cards. They will be locked. If I do use them, you know, so be it. But at the end of the day, I just simply have trust issues with Navy Federal now. So let's talk about some other financial institutions that offer the pledge loan hack, which is a secured loan. Basically, you're taking your own cash, you're putting it on your credit report as if it were an installment loan and using that to build a positive credit history and and build up a positive relationship with the bank. So I'm not going to go over all of these, but this list again is going to be in the course is going to be below in the description. A couple of my favorite are pin fed that's Pentagon federal credit union, DCU. I like golden one. They're a California Patelco, a couple other ones that really catch my eye are the Chevron Federal Credit Union. Let's see what else is here. They're all really good. To be honest with you, they're all really good banks. So, you know, do some research, see if they're available in your area. If so, find out what bank is going to be best for you and your goals. And if you do need coaching, I've left a link below for you to schedule a coaching call. Again, guys, make sure that you have subscribed. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Here are some banks in credit unions that are going to pull from TransUnion. Now, keep in mind, information data is always changing. OK, and sometimes banks pull from multiple credit bureaus like Chase. Sometimes they pull from, say, Experience. Sometimes it's Equifax. And same thing with some of these other banks. It's a territory thing. So based on your location, they may or may not pull from a certain bureau. OK, but this is just the data. You can always call the bank directly and ask them, hey, if I apply for a credit card, who are you going to pull my credit from? Because credit products can also trigger a different pull. So if you're applying for, say, an auto loan or a credit card, different credit products might have different approvals and might pull from a different bureau. So just keep those things in mind. And plus, you know, things are just always changing. But here are some great banks that also pull TransUnion just like Navy Federal. And Navy Federal is also known to pull Equifax because back in the day they used to be an Equifax bank. But there is Apple Federal Credit Union and Apple Federal Credit Union is a great alternative and they are probably better than Navy Federal in my opinion. Alliant, Lake Michigan, Fifth Third, SunTrust Bank, which, you know, BMO Harris, Apple, Goldman Sachs, they have, they underwrite for the Apple card and the GM financial card. So you could potentially get two of those credit cards and they give out pretty good limits as well. They are underwritten by Goldman Sachs, which uses TransUnion. Barclays, Synchrony, bank store cards. So a lot of the Synchrony cards, Care Credit, you know, they're going to be pulling from TransUnion only. The Chase business credit cards, they could also 
also pull from TransUnion. So, you know, this is just a small list of, you know, alternatives that pull from TransUnion. Here are some different banks that are going to be pulling from Experian. So we've got First Tech, one of my favorite. Beware, when you actually sign up for a bank account with them, like just a checking account, they're going to hard pull your credit, but you can get that deleted. There's PSE, CU. CU is always going to be Credit Union, Andrews Federal Credit Union, State Department. There's Affinity, Redstone, NASA. That's a really good one. Unify, American Heritage, all these places, okay? Discover, you don't have to have a bank account with Discover. They pull from Experian. Bank of America is an Experian and so is American Express. So these are all some different places that will pull your credit from Experian. You'll notice here Chase is on my list, but it does vary by your location. And inside of my course, I put together some credit stacking tips, which lays out where Chase is pulling from based on location. So there's a ton of great information. You guys see how much I put into these slides. So you can only imagine what is inside of my course. Uh, here are some banks that pull from Equifax. And again, it can vary based on location. DCU, Digital Credit Union, they also do the pledge loan so you can get with them. PinFed, they're also an Equifax bank. They also do the secured loan where, you know, it's no hard pull and it's going to report to your credit. There's a ton here. Chevron, they could pull Equifax. They could pull others. Elon can vary. Citizens Bank, Chase, you know, a lot of these can vary because they use different bureaus. But DCU is definitely Equifax only. PinFed is definitely Equifax only. Chevron can vary. Langley is Equifax. Citizens is Equifax. NIH is an Equifax. So a lot of these, Wood Forest, they're not a credit union, but they are an Equifax bank. SkyPoint, you know, there's just a lot of great options here for you guys. And I always tell you guys, you want to build credit with a few different banks, but not too fast. So if you're going to open up a couple bank accounts, maybe two to three at a time, and then you need to wait like six to 12 months. Okay. And I've had people do it sooner, but I just don't recommend rushing the process because every time you apply for a bank account, you're going to get an inquiry on your check systems report or your early warning report, depending on who they pull from. So if you are going to be signing up with a couple different banks, you know, they're going to pull you and if they're going to see that. So I would apply with them all at the same time. Use the credit stacking method is, you know, apply for all of the banks that are going to be looking at your check system all at the same time. If you're going to be doing a couple with early warning, apply, you know, same day, same time frame. And in my spreadsheet, I have where these banks are actually going to be looking at your consumer data, whether that's going to be check systems, early warning. And I've, again, I put in as much data as I know. And some banks are actually going to do a soft pull on you. Some banks are going to do a hard pull on you. And it varies. You can always ask them if they are going to be doing a hard credit pull for you applying for a simple checking and savings account. And a lot of the banks are these days, but just so they can verify your identity. But again, you can get those inquiries deleted very easily. You can call, delete them over the phone. You can write a letter. It's very easy to get inquiries off. If they don't come off, you just keep trying. Okay. Sometimes they don't come off the first round, but you have to be consistent. Okay. Not everything is going to happen right off the bat. And you know, it kills me because these people, they go, Oh, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Well, how many times did you try? I called and they said, no, well, you've only tried once. I mean, a lot of times when I have to get something done, I have to try at least, you know, three times with credit. You can like two X that six times because a lot of times they just simply don't listen. And a lot of their employees are just you know, they just don't get it. Okay. Just, they're not even from our country. So they employ people that are just, you know, given a script. Okay. Are just told what to do. And a lot of times they don't even really understand us. And I can hear a lot of roosters in the background. So, you know, that they don't know the first thing about credit. All that they know is what this company is telling them or what the script on the screen in front of them says, and they're reading it. Okay. And they sound like a robot. Now here is the credit union list. This is just a snip of, you know, the spreadsheet that I put together and on the inside of the course on this PDF, you'll be able to click on it 
and get that full list where it's going to, you know, go over of what the eligibility is in order to join and just give you some good, helpful tips on, you know, whether it's going to be a hard pull, soft pull. And again, data is always changing. So you can always verify this by simply asking the bank questions during your sign up. Thank you guys so, so much for joining me today. You could have been anywhere else, but you decided to listen to me ramble on about beware of Navy Federal. So I appreciate you watching. If you haven't by now, make sure that you have liked the video. Give me two thumbs up there. Uh, leave me a comment below and let me know what you thought about the video. And if you have any questions and maybe what your experience has been with Navy Federal thus far. Make sure to share the video on your Facebook, share it via text message, share it with your entire Rolodex because we need to get this information out to more people so they can play it safe because with Navy Federal being the number one bank, we all know what comes along with that. And it's not always the good, but you know, the bad and the ugly are soon to come. And it is now that time where the bad and the ugly are now starting to really reveal themselves. And again, this is not anything new. It's just now coming out for everyone to learn about. So make an educated decision. And if you haven't watched some of the playlists on my channel, there's some coming up next.